Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome to MacBreak Studio. My name is Mark Spencer. I'm here with the illustrious Steve Martin from Ripple Training. Hey, Steve. Good to see you, Mark. And we are continuing our exploration of the brave new world of Final Cut Pro X. So we're going to pick up where we last left off. Yes. And which is? Which is, we're going to look at connected clips today. Okay. So once again, every time we get together, you throw something brand new at me. And my brain is getting full. So we've got events, we've got projects, we've got this skimmer thing going on, we've got selecting ranges, and now connected clips. What the heck is a connected clip? Well, in order to understand a connected clip, you have to understand this new concept of a (laughs) storyline. So... (laughs) There's a new a new editing metaphor. Look look at look at this okay. timeline. Do you, do you, I know it's you, cool. I know, it's, but do you do you see any tracks? Um, do you see a do you see a lane? See I, that line? That's we oh, call that a lane. It's like a, a lane. lane. That's yeah. sort of like black strip that all the clips are laying exactly. in right there. Think of okay. it as this lane or a container. And that's all, this timeline is also known, aka, as a storyline. Okay, it's a new metaphor, and the idea okay. is you lay out your story in the storyline. Okay. Okay, I'm just tell me more. Okay, well, look, the, the idea with the storyline is that, well, let's, let's back up a second. In a track based editing paradigm, let's say like other editing apps, applications, you have a video one, video two, video three right. tracks. <laughs> right. Well, you don't see any tracks. Essentially, it, most of everything that happens, oh, oh, let me turn off that skimmer. Now it's really annoying. Yes. See? <laughs> uh, most of everything that happens in, editorially happens in that main lane called a primary storyline. So okay. all of your primary content, your, your interviews, your, your, your uh, action shots, essentially your, the primary constituents of, your, of what the story you ch- are trying to tell will end up in that. And, and maybe that's all you have. Is, maybe is, that's is, all you depending have. Depending on what kind of story you're telling, what kind of material you're working with. Right. Okay. But the, the, the thing about storylines is that the way it's set up is it, uh, it allows you to work more fluidly without running into the, some, the inherent limitations of a track-based editing environment, and which we'll, we're going to look at as we go through this. But... Right now, if I was just to work with this timeline, this is pretty straightforward. I have these clips one after the other, right? Yep. And the nice thing is, is if I wanted to rearrange them, I can move them right or left. Notice they just immediately swap out. You can't do this in the current, I mean, you can, but it, it takes a couple of modifier keys. And it's, you can see you get quick visual feedback if I want to rearrange these. So when you clips. drag and let go, it, it's not going to cut another clip in half or something or leave a gap or anything leave a like gap. that. It prevents all of that. It's okay. a, it, exactly. So it, it, the entire construct allows you to safely move things around without losing your timing or overriding stuff. See? Beautiful. Yeah. So that makes sense. The, the other thing, too, is you'll notice that you can't just grab a clip and, and just move it. You know, it's they're always... It just snaps right back snap, again. That's right, because the way the storyline works is that there has to be clips one out to the other. The integrity of the spine... I, I like to re- refer to this as a spine analogy. These are, these are vertebrae along the spine. If I try to delete that, or if I do delete it, it has to fuse two, two okay. sp- uh, vertebrae together. And if I use, uh, if I do a shift delete, if it's selected and do a shift delete, notice there's a, a, a standard, uh, ex- yes, a, a lift edit here. Right. And notice here, it, it put a clip in there called a gap this, clip. Oh, there's actually something there, it's a very a, dark, a gap it's clip. It's a gap clip to maintain the integrity of the storyline. Ah, uh, I have to say, it freaked me out a little bit when you drive that last clip to the right and it just snapped back. It was like, I am not going to do that. It's, it's got to stay together. That's because together. It, you can't just, move, you're not moving in, in anywhere. It's, again, it's, it's looking for, the way it's constructed is all of these clips are like individual pieces. Okay. Okay, and you have to, and the, main, the integrity of the spine has to be maintained. Okay. Okay, so um, now that we can understand kind of the ground rules for a storyline, story we can now look at, well, you might want to enhance the story with a B-roll cutaway or maybe some music. And typically, you'd put that in another track in track in a track-based editing um, yes. modality. But in this, you're connecting clips to the storyline, so you're, you're you're not really putting them in tracks. You're connecting them so that you can when you're cutting okay. away. Okay. Okay. So you're okay. Well, do it. And I think okay. I, I think I should let's what you're let's find something that we want to cut away to. So let's say, for example, um, let's just say. And by the way, I said in the last lesson, you use a playhead for what you're going to cut away to. That playhead position becomes uh, your edit point, your edit end point, okay? As opposed to the skimmer. The a, a, exactly. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just pick a, a little bit. Of, I'm going to just pick a I'm just going to drag out a little section of this right here, maybe 20, maybe five, 
six, you know, second or so, right? Now, I wanted that to be a cutaway and uh, or a B-roll shot. So I'm going to use uh, this button over here. And notice it says, connect the selected clip to the primary oh. storyline. Okay, this and this, this is the last of those three editing operations that, that uh, we went over the other two in the, in the, in the sure. previous episode, but now we're finally getting to this very so, interesting one. So, I'm gonna go ahead and click this. Okay. And notice what it does, is it adds it, and it added it right at the play hit position, and if you, zoom, if you look here, you'll see a little connection line meaning that that clip is connected to the shot directly below it. And, and it's actually connected to that frame to that of that frame, clip? To that okay. frame. So that's the idea. It's not really on a separate track. It's connected to that particular frame of that sure, clip. Sure, absolutely. So when I skim over it, you can see that it can play. We just lose the wall. And so you get your cutaway. You get your cutaway. Uh -huh. Now I'm gonna undo that to show you a variation on a theme. Okay. Okay. Now notice it brought down the video and the audio, did it not? Yes. Well, there's a little button right here uh, that you click on and you could say, notice it all, ah. it's bringing down the video and audio for the couple. I say I only wanted to bring down the video. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to hear that all the this, background. This pop-up is a distant cousin to the patch panel in Final Cut Pro 7. Yes, yes. Right? It's like toggling the, uh, those, those the clicking little, those tracks and moving them on. I mean, a little connector. The little connectors, <laughs> right. So it's not exactly the same, but it's close. So you can say, look, I'm only interested in connecting the video for that shot. So yes. notice the icons change. It's like, you get a little blue icon now. It says that that it's gonna be video only. Oh, it's like a little person in the picture, a little yeah, pro okay. Exactly. Yeah. But I click that, and notice now there's no audio waveform. No audio. It just brings right. down the picture, right. okay? Now, the, the, the beauty of a connected clip is that when you do do trims, notice that uh, the, 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 the relationship between that connected clip and the clip it's connected to always is maintained. Okay, so you're, you're basically doing, jumping ahead a little bit because you're doing a ripple edit there, but you're, you're actually pushing Trimming. everything out when yeah. you're doing that. Those two stay in relationship to each other no, no matter really, what. No matter what, exactly. So if you were to bring a new clip in and do one of those um, insert edits, it's right. still called an insert edit here, with this, this middle button, then it would push, it would put everything down, including that guy. It, it, exactly. In fact, okay. you can do it really quick. If I set the, uh, set the playhead here, and I'm going to open up... Uh, now, this is actually a pretty big clip, so I'm, I'm going to just grab a selection of that. And I'm going to just do insert there, right? Yes. You're right. You see it pushed. Everything, everything goes everything, down. Everything goes down because okay. it's connected. Now, there is one gotcha with connected clips, and I, I knew need to point this out. Because you're not dealing with tracks, and that's why I tell people, you know, the idea of tracks is just, it's just you can't think that way. You have to yes. unlearn what you have learned. So if I select that clip, that, that one is connected to, and press delete, watch yes. what happens. The connected one goes away. Bye-bye. Now it's what if you high. what if you what if you deleted the the upper connected clip? Well, you can, but I'm just... going to show you a way around this. Okay. One way around this is to select the clip, control or right click on it, and choose there is a replace with gap clip. And as soon as you do that, you notice I maintain my timing. Maintain the timing that we yeah. talked about before, right? Right. So uh, the other way to do it is look. I know I'm going to put another shot there. I would want to delete it. Uh, yes. If I if I wanted to leave and keep the connected, but I'm not sure I want to put there, replacing it with a gap is a very good choice. Okay. Otherwise, what you'd want to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and pick another another shot here. Actually, I used that one already. Let's, let's get this one. Um, I'm going to just grab this a little section of this, okay? And I can just grab this, and we haven't really talked about it, but you can also drag this on top of that one and choose a replace edit. Ah, and then replace the clip. Beautiful. And again, yeah, you'll yeah. also maintain your clip connections. Okay. What I'm, I guess what I'm emphasizing, you can't just go willy-nilly through your timeline and start deleting clips in the primary storyline because there might be connected yes. clips that are affected. But you could delete, delete the collect. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You could delete the connected clip itself, and only it would go away, right? The one yeah, on you top. could. You could delete. You that. could do that, yeah. and then. You, but, but look, you could also move the clip. Oh, okay. You perfectly right. free to reposition that over and connect it to a different frame of any other clip. Yeah, exactly. Now, um, yeah. So you got, you just have to be careful about what, what you're connected to. Okay. So the other thing, you, you could, again, you see that little line. You can see that little line there. Um, that's connecting it. You, it, whatever it's connected to, that's what that's what's going to be affected when you delete when you delete. Exactly. Okay. So that's essentially uh, the connected clip relationship, and I think it's uh, again important for Final Cut Pro 10 users to understand. How yeah, it works. it's it's a, that's a big change, but it allows you to keep um, integrity of your of your edit, right? Yes. And you don't introduce these these problems of creating things shifting out of sync. Or creating gaps in your story, Correct. and because this is just one simple example, but you could have 30, 40, uh, hundreds of clips in the connected clips, and they're always going to stay in sync. Yes, they are. Beautiful, Steve. Thank you. That's great. Uh, very good information. Um, we'll dive deeper in a future episode. But first, uh, I want to learn more. I go to RippleTraining.com. I would assume. And we have a full training on there on Final Cut Pro 10. You can download. 
through iTunes and then sync with your iPad. Okay. It's awesome. RippleTraining.com. Steve, thank you. And we'll be back for more. Thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.